Now I'd like you to consider a couple of completely different movement patterns as it relates to bucks versus does and how that you can apply those concepts and the strategy to your private land you know it really depends on the uh, the makeup of your land we're hunting in ridge country right here we're managing this property that's changing in elevation elevation drastically but bottom line it doesn't matter if it's flat land hilly land like we have right here bucks and does really travel a lot differently and one major concept bucks are referred to as loopers meaning that they started at the same spot right up here it's the same it's a buck bedding area it's about 250 to 300 yards up here it's on top of the ridge and a little bit on the back side on this ridge that comes down here and what I notice a lot and maybe you notice this type of thing too is that depending on the wind direction this buck that ends up in this food source right down here still ended up in the same food source every single night amazing how the loop and change your direction of travel to that food source based on the wind direction. They'll bed in the same location every single day. You see that, that's very common. I see that around the entire country. It doesn't matter if it's flat or elevated in high topography or not. Bed in the same general area. They might have two or three areas that they call their own. And the trick is, as long as you don't overpressure the food source, you don't overpressure the bedding area, then you can plan on hunting that buck over and over again throughout the entire season. But as he travels down to this food source down here, he can drastically alter his travel pattern based on the wind. So for example, this is west over here. Westerly winds coming through this hollow. What we'll see a lot is a buck that's bedded up on that ridge, on that point over here to the east. He'll follow down this point along this bottom here and he'll end up making it down to the food source. That passes blind down there. We have a redneck down the bottom. We also have two stands up here and certainly we have stands up in the top to take advantage in the morning as those deer are moving back to their bedding areas. West winds we're hunting down here southwest winds maybe even a northwest wind they're all blowing this way and we will see that buck a lot of times come through here he has the wind at his advantage he can scent check the not only the food sources but he before he gets into those locations but he can scent check the doe bedding areas that are closer to the food source before he even gets to those bedding areas. So if he doesn't even want to step out into the food source and it's steering the rut, he can actually check out every deer that's in this location based on the wind direction. And I feel the older that he gets, the more I see him doing that, the more that he picks his route to that afternoon food source based on the wind. Now on the flip side, if we have a north wind, northeast wind, easterly wind, all these winds blowing back here, we'll see that same buck that beds up here on the top, travel along this entire ridge line. You can see how it benches down slowly and you'll loop right around and you'll end up back in this same exact food source down the bottom. So you still ended up in that same spot, just a completely different location. And we're only talking about an area of eight to 12 acres here. So this isn't like he's looping half mile that way one day and a quarter mile that way. If you're not over pressuring your property, you're not over pressuring that food source, you're not over pressuring the bedding areas and the travel to those food sources or bedding areas, then you can expect that same consistent movement all season long. The more defined movements that you have and the more the deer feel comfortable on the land, you're, the more you're gonna see those bucks looping, and the more you're gonna see them highly defined into those locations, which is why you can't just have one movement back and forth that you expect the deer to follow every day. Now that's buck, completely different with the does the does, a lot of times, they're bedded where we're standing right here. We're only 100 yards off the food source. They might be bedded on this bench over here. They might be bedded around the corner of the point over here. They might be bedded right up here. We'll see the same doe family groups bedding on that bench right there, where this little finger ridge comes down right up under the fur up there. We'll see the same doe family groups bedding in the same spots, popping out into the same spots in the food source every single night. They move straight line. Doesn't matter the wind. They do the same stinking thing every day. Completely different than a buck. Mature bucks, an independent thinker, acts alone. I believe the wind really influences how he moves on a daily basis, even though he might start and stop at the same spot. Does, straight line. And the more consistently you don't overpressure your property, that you don't overhunt your property, that you don't overhunt the food sources, the bedding areas, and all the pieces that makes up to it, so easy to capitalize on that doe movement. If you need to take out a doe, even a specific mature doe, they're really gonna do 
mostly the same thing every single day, all season long, as long as you keep the food sources and the bedding areas consistent. Doe family groups most straight line. They bed here, they feed there, and then after dark, they go out to the ag fields around here. So, but during that daylight hours where you're trying to manage just that movement, because let's face it, what you manage during the daylight hours is what you have the power to influence. Who cares where they go at night? Who cares if 90% of a buck's movement's after dark? You're really looking at those small windows of 100 to 400 yards of movement during the daylight hours between does and bucks. Think of does as moving straight line to and from bedding to feeding. You can set up on them, very easy to do so. They'll move those same lines every single day. Think of bucks altering their routes as they travel from bedding to feeding, depending on the wind, and they'll do that the same way as they're getting back to their bedding areas in the morning based on the wind. I've seen them circle around and head into the wind to go into those bedding areas. It's great to have complimentary stands. We talked that, about that in other videos where you can take advantage of different winds for different movements. But really when it boils down to it, think of bucks as loopers. Think of them as moving around, facing into the wind, having the wind at their advantage. Not necessarily for even the food source and checking it out, but checking out every deer out on the way to and from. And then think about those does. If you want to shoot a doe, if you need to reduce the deer numbers, pretty easy to just step right into a doe movement, a straight line movement, and capitalize on that straight, simple, short movement. Big difference between does and bucks, it can relate to an area even as small as eight to 10 acres. And I think if you apply that to your parcel, no matter what the size, you can find a lot of success this coming hunting season whether you're just trying to manage your herd, whether you're trying to have a great hunt, but most of all, you're enjoying whitetails like the rest of us.